Good morning, and welcome to the worship experience of the Community Church of Poway United Church of Christ. We are so glad that you are with us this morning. And as you can see, it is Christmas in August in our community. We look forward today to discussing again and thinking about that greatest gift that was given to us so many years ago. I believe it is something that we need to hear during these times. A couple of announcements before we get started this morning. Don't forget that you can be with Pastor Debbie on Wednesday afternoons at 3.30 for for her bouquets of blessings, I believe she calls it. Two o'clock on Thursday, a Zoom hangout with the pastor, that would be me. And also, on August 5th, we are going to be beginning a new Bible study. It's going to be uh, held on Zoom. It's going to be on Wednesday evenings at 6 o'clock. And we're going to be looking at the book of Galatians. I really encourage you to be a part of this. And in conjunction with that, I will be preaching on Galatians through the month of August. Uh, A couple of other things. Today is communion, so I encourage you to get some elements ready. A a donut, a roll, a cracker, some juice, some coffee, whatever that is for you, so that we can share in this meal together. We will also be doing drive-through communion starting at 11 o'clock this morning. Uh, If you can come into the community road entrance to the church, drive through and Pastor Debbie and I and Freddie will be there to greet you and to offer you communion and then you can exit out the Hillary exit. So we look forward to that time get to see you face to face. And one more announcement, we have a new official member of our church, Mark Sanzi, who many of you know as Mark the Drummer. He plays drums for uh, Wing and a Prayer on our alternate weeks. And Mark is also the person who works so hard at getting our worship videos all put together with beautiful graphics and transitions. And last week during our council meeting, we had a covenant, a new member covenant with Mark. And it was a glorious time, a very special time to be able to welcome someone into our community, even though we are physically distant. But whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, we want you to know that you are welcome in this place. I invite you now to join Wing in a prayer as we experience a beautiful rendition of what child is this?
Happy Sunday and Merry Christmas in August. Go gather the children. It's almost story time. I'll wait right here. And when you get back, we'll go find Jesus. Today's story is called, What Star Is This? Far off in space where comets fly, in an icy ring through the deep dark sky, a tiny comet with a bubbling tail is born this night on that frosty trail. What star is this? It bounces off its icy berth and sails away for the far off earth. Down, down, its beam is on the dancing goat and the gliding swan the dipping bear, the leaping lion, the flying horse, and the hunter Orin. What star is this? Planets puff and the meteors fly, but the bold little comet ducks right by. On and on its glowing ta sail spreads out like a peacock's tail. Beautiful. Down, down, its path is sure. It knows the one it's headed for. Then over the earth, asleep and still, the comet blinks. Good will, good will. And far below, the wise men cry. What star is this that lights the sky? Then, suddenly at birth of day, the shepherds hear the angels say, Go to the manger, have no care, for see, the star you want is there. And there he is in Mary's bed, a glowing ring around his head. What star is this? They kneel to see the baby Jesus. It is he. The end. I'm hoping that tonight you will be able to go outside and look up in the sky and see all those gifts that God hung up there just for you. God bless your Sunday. Bye-bye. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today's scripture reading is from Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. It is about the birth of Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. There was the first registration, and it was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them at the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stopped before them and the angel of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good, no good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord, 
This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Thank you so much, and have a blessed day. Christ the Lord, and his name shall be Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace.
Wow, so beautiful. Thank you so much, Carl and Myra, and our special guests, Doreen and Hayden, for bringing us this beautiful reminder of the holiness of that night so long ago, that night that changed the course of the world and continues to change lives today. What a blessing it was to have you with us. You know, many places around the world, they celebrate an alternative day for Christmas. I know that in Australia, they have Christmas in July because they like to have it during the winter months. Today, we are celebrating Christmas in August because that's what we do at Community Church of Poway. We do things our own way. But I want to invite you to just think about the day. Think about the season. Think about the hustle and bustle of everything that we do during Advent and Christmas. And then think about the gift. Today, we are going to concentrate on that gift. Haul out the holly. Put up the tree before my spirits fall again. Fill up the stocking. I may be rushing things, but deck the halls again now. For we need a little Christmas right this very minute. Candles in the window, carols at the spinet. We need a little Christmas now. Some of you might recognize that song from the Broadway musical Mame. Debuted on May 24th, 1966 at the Winter Garden Theater in New York. And Mame, well, it follows the story of Mame Dennis. Mame Dennis was a highfalutin society woman. And her nephew came to live with her after the death of her brother. And then the stock market crashed. And so Mame sings this song to Ito and Agnes Gooch and her little nephew Patrick to lift their spirits. Oh yes, oh yes, we need a little Christmas now. Now there's really no reason this morning, I think, to rehash what we have gone through over the past five and a half months. But I will remember, I will remind you, excuse me, I will remind you that the last service that we had in our beautiful sanctuary was March 8th. March 8th. And if you do the math, that will be 18 Sunday services. If you add on special services that we did for Holy Week during Easter, that is 21 times that we have come to you, that we have gathered together online to worship. Oh, yeah. I can tell you that myself, the tech staff, the worship staff, we need a little Christmas about now. We need to find that joy. We need to experience that hope, the peace, and the love that that season brings. Let's pray. Holy God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that even though it is not Christmas, it is not Advent, that we can take some time in these hot days of summer to experience yet again the wonders of your birth, to remember the angels and the shepherds, the wise men, the manger, the entire story. May the words of my mouth and meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our strength and our redeemer, our Christ of Christmas. Amen. In my family... It was a well-known fact and a rule that you were not to snoop during Christmas. The weeks prior to Christmas, you were not to go into closets, you were not to look into drawers, you were not to look under beds, because if you were, by chance, to find a Christmas gift that was meant for you, you would not get it. And I can tell you, I followed that rule to a T. Except for one year. I think it was 1968. I think I was seven years old. I was spending the afternoon at my grandparents' house, grandma and papa, and I went out into the cedar closet, which was in the garage, and I opened the cedar closet because that's where they kept the toys and the games for us to use and to play with while we were there. I opened the door and I turned on the little light, and there it was. Angels singing, I saw that purple Schwinn Stingray bike. 
I saw that wheelie bar on the back of the seat, the banana seat that was long and narrow. And then I thought to myself, what have I done? What have I done? I ran to the room where we slept when we were at Grandma and Papa's house. And I was on the bed crying, and my sister, who is four years older, she came in and she said, Greg, what is wrong? And all I could muster through my tears was to say, Jana, I found it. I found my bike. I'm not going to get my bike because I found it. She said, Greg, I will not tell anyone. You weren't out searching for it. I told my parents several years later, and they laughed. But I wonder, I wonder, in this Christmas and August celebration, could it be that God, that God is calling us to snoop around to find our gift? To find our gift of the Christ child, this Jesus, this embodiment of, of grace and love, well, let's just say that I think that God is begging us to look for the Christ. Especially when it's not December 25th. When we look at the Advent prophecies of, of hope, peace, joy, and love, I fear too often that those gifts remain under a tree, not unwrapped, but held tightly and then put away until next year, until that Sunday after Thanksgiving when we begin that journey to Christmas again. When we look a little more closely, I think, at the Christmas story as found in Luke that Debbie read for us this morning, I think, I think that there is something that we can glean that is extra special for us today. You see, I do think we need a little Christmas now, I think about the beginnings of the Luke 2, Luke 2 story. There was a census, right? We are in a time of census, aren't we? And I want to encourage you, if you have not filled out your census, please do so. It is very important. Similar times. We are not officially occupied by a foreign government as they were in the Middle East during the time of Jesus' birth. But in the past several weeks, we have seen an uptick, haven't we? An uptick of camouflaged military police in cities taking folks away. It's scary to me, folks. We might not be looking for a shelter in which to give birth to a child, but I can tell you, if you were to do a cross-country trip right now, you have to be very careful about those hotel reservations. Because you see in New Mexico in particular, if you go into New Mexico and stop and, and go into a hotel or a motel, you're required to stay there for 14 days. So people are bypassing New Mexico all that they can. I think about the exile to Egypt when Mary and Joseph took that baby to Egypt for safety because Herod was out to get all the little boys. And then I think about all of those families that come to our borders not too many miles from here, many of which are met with separation, families being separated, children still in cages, Sounds to me like the stage is set again for the coming of Jesus. What better time to be like the shepherds in our daily routines, even though they have changed a lot in the past five months, doing our routine, doing what we do, and to once again feel that love is coming. Those words that Pastor Debbie spoke in her sermon a couple of weeks ago, fear not, do not be afraid, coming from the angels to the shepherds. For unto us is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord. A Savior. 
the embodiment of hope and peace, joy, and love. So yeah, unlike the rules in my childhood home, I believe that we are being called, just as the shepherds were called that night, to search out this gift, to snoop around, so to speak, to find places where that gift comes alive. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And you are going to find that gift. You are going to find Christ's presence in the most unlikely of places. Luke's gospel sets out the circumstance of Christ coming into the world. We have the characters. We experience the angels, the announcement to search out this gift. Oh yeah. We need a little Christmas now don't we? To be able to think about this gift, to be able to think about Jesus without the hustle and bustle of parties, the crowds at the mall, shopping and buying gifts, it's exhausting. So today, today I hope you are realizing that God's gift of grace is ongoing and cannot and will not be regulated to one season. We don't have to haul out the holly, put up the tree, fill the stockings to remember that this wonderful gift of grace is being continually offered to us. And that is a reason to celebrate Christmas in August. I encourage you, go snooping. Go snooping, especially in this hot summer, surrounded by unrest, surrounded by violence, surrounded by a census, and surrounded by an election. Surrounded by mass sickness and fear. You will find Jesus in these times. We need a little Christmas now. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace, goodwill to all. That's God's gift. Embrace that gift of grace. And yeah, go snooping a bit. You might be surprised. That gift is for you. Merry Christmas. Amen. We need a little Christmas now. And one of the greatest gifts that we have as followers of Jesus is this gift, this meal, these simple elements that we share together once a month. I want to remind you that we will also be sharing communion with drive through Communion starting at 11 o'clock this morning. So we hope to see you there. But for those of you who won't be there with us this afternoon, I encourage you to get those simple elements out and let's remember this part of the gift. It was a quiet night and Jesus gathered with his very best, his disciples. They had been eating and drinking all evening and then Jesus turned it around. He made it all about himself. And he took the bread He blessed it and he gave thanks. And he said this, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and after he had blessed it and gave thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, this is the blood of the new covenant. This is the promise. This is the gift sealed with my life force. Drink it together in community, for when you do, you remember me. You strengthen yourself, and you strengthen the church. 
and they did eat and drink. Let's pray. Holy God, we thank you for these simple elements. We thank you for what they mean to each one of us. So many different ideas. But together we received this gift. Give us power. Give us strength. Give us peace, joy, hope, and love as we leave this place today. Amen. It is the time in our service when we receive our tithes and our offerings and our donations. I want to thank you so much for continuing to be faithful to this church. We have obligations. We have ministry that is going on. And we look forward to the day when we can be back together. But right now we live in this reality. So I encourage you to go to the link that it's at the bottom of your screen where you can always mail in your check. And a special offering that we have during December to go along with our Christmas in August theme is the Christmas Fund, the Christmas Fund of the United Church of Christ, which basically goes to help retired pastors, which I will be there one day, and we'll probably be looking for those funds. <laughs> anyway, it's a great, a great offering that we do as a wider church, and this will continue to get us up to date so that we can be a five of five church where we give to all special offerings of the United Church of Christ. But give as your heart leads. Know that you are loved and we are grateful for you. As followers of the teachings and the life of Jesus, one of the great gifts that we have is to be able to go to God in prayer, individually and as a community. So right now, I invite you to join me in a time of prayer. Holy God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we can celebrate your birth anytime we want. We can be reminded of the gifts of hope and peace and joy and love. We can be reminded and be strengthened to carry on even when things are difficult. We ask that you be with our nation as decisions are made concerning about the care and the health of all of our people. We ask that you be with those doctors and those nurses who continue continually work to bring comfort 
to bring healing. We ask that you be with those who are experiencing the effects of this virus. And we give thanks for those of us who have been spared for whatever reason. Keep us very strong and focused on all the things that we need to do to remain healthy. We thank you for our church. We thank you for all churches that continue to meet and to proclaim a message of hope during these days. This morning, we want to lift up all those in our own family who are dealing with sickness, dealing with unemployment and underemployment. We ask that you be with relationships, some that are being stretched to their limits. May this be a time of reconciliation and healing. God, this morning, we thank you most for your never-ending presence. We thank you that you are walking this journey with us. Let us never take for granted the presence of our Savior in everything that we do, everywhere that we go, everyone that we come in contact with. And help us, O God, to be a people who in these days snoop around looking for Christ, where Christ will show up where the gifts of the Spirit will be manifested, where the fruits of the Spirit will be what lead us in life. We thank you for the way that you have led us and you led your disciples and you taught them to pray this beautiful, beautiful reminder of your love. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved, remember that God has no hands but our hands, no feet but our feet, and no face but our face. And I would say that the spirit of Christmas that resides in our hearts 
is exactly what we need to make it through these days. And I can tell you it is exactly what the world needs. So share that gift of love, of peace, of joy, and of hope with all you meet this week. I pray this name of the Father, the Mother, the Creator of us all, the love and forgiveness and companionship of the gift that is Jesus, and in the power of the gift that is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, and we will see you next week. Thank you.